I was asked to do a small video uh, presentation about the equipment that I will be using uh, during mastering here at the Goose Music. So, um, yeah, just a small video to show off what, what I'm using mostly. Um, first off, you see kind of like uh, what is based on uh, a Santec EQ, but the high shelving is more like uh, a Massenberg EQ and the output is from Fred Forsell. I built it myself and it has uh, step switches all over, as you can see in here right here it's the, my go-to EQ it really has a lot of balls let's put it that way and it really sounds great um, and I use it mostly in mid side uh, setting by the way so the left channel is mid and the right channel is side uh, here's a Barry Porter EQ uh, Barry Porter is a guy he died I think it was 2001 and he designed this EQ the net EQ, the grinder EQ, uh, let's call it that way. Uh, I built it myself as well, also with step switches. And I was basically the first one to build it this way with uh, step controls and using the original design. It has four bands and uh, a high pass filter uh, with different frequencies than the standard one. And for the rest, yeah. I, I still love it. This is really a, a really a clean EQ. Uh, it, it really doesn't sound like an EQ. Um, you can boost and cut quite a lot without hearing what is going on. Um, very new compressor based on a poor man's uh, compressor, uh, which is a well-known design on uh, in the the, the do-it-yourself community. Um, it worked, and it sounded okay, but it wasn't. Uh, something which you could use in mastering. So I rebuilt it myself and I called it the Mu666 because now it's it's a totally different machine. Um, one set of controls, so stereo, so no left and right because I think it's easier to work with a compressor that way. Uh, the standard input, threshold, attack release, uh, but this one has uh, a sidechain option as well and it sounds so much better than the, the, the original design, the, the the poor man 670 compressor which was officially based on the Fairchild compressor but it's totally not trust me it's it's completely different um, but this one is like um, a regular uh, fairy moo compressor um, and it has uh, yeah a really a great sound if you push it hard it really growls but if you use it gently it's it's simply a fairy moo compressor and it sounds clean as hell okay another tube compressor an optical tube compressor, um, the optical, uh, yeah, like I said, an optical tube compressor, and it's a pretty straightforward, simple compressor, just input, output, threshold, and I have three types of uh, compression modes, uh, which I built myself. It's an optical one. Um, I have to set the needle to zero. There's also a knob dedicated for that. Uh, it's still warming up, so it could be that it's different in about an hour or so. Um, Really simple compressor, really fast, really transparent. Uh, I use it mostly on uh, uh, acoustical music where you don't want the compressor to be heard. Um, yeah, really subtle. Okay, let's go this way. Um, Air EQ 3D, basically the Mach EQ, the Mach EQ, the EQ 3D. Uh, it's exactly the same design. I just use different op amps, and what I did, I built it again with step switches because yeah you, you, you simply want that for mastering of course then there's a pretty famous uh, food control systems P3S mastering edition stereo compressor um, simply a great compressor but you can see that there's a separate box here and these are the extra controls that I have it's a, a quite a simple sidechain uh, option um, in, in the compressor itself, but I built a separate box for it and it has more functions. Um, if I set it to off, there's no sidechain going on. I should have cleaned my nails. Okay. Um, there's no sidechain filtering going on, but this is the, the filtering that is standard, 75 Hz, but as you can see, there's way more to it. Um, I also wanted something that really removed all the low frequencies and also part of the mid frequencies. So there's a setting with 780 hertz. But there's also, as you can see right here, a thrust medium and thrust high, which is basically the the filtering settings which you could also use in the API 2500 compressor. But I built it myself, and 
So I have a food control systems compressor with um, the API 2500 um, things going on, and it it, it can really works one. It works, yeah, it can work great because, uh, for instance, you can make your snare drums way more snappy than you can with just uh, a regular sidechain filter. So it, it's great. It, it's a really a nice addition to the already great uh, food control system, and of course it's stepped. But that's always the case with the mastering edition of this compressor. Then I have this master console. Uh, it's basically an insert console with six inserts, uh, compressors, EQs and things like that. I can use it in mid-sides mode. Uh, I'm using it mostly as uh, a mid-sides processor for uh, my EQs. But by touch of a button I can make it a mid-side compressor or switch to stereo again, whatever I want to. I can switch the order, I can bypass things and I build it myself, design it myself and it has something like, out of my mind, I think 72 re um, uh, what they're called, uh, relays. So it's totally passive, uh, of course not the, the, the mid-side function, uh, but for the rest it's, it's totally passive and it's transparent and clean. And yeah, you already saw it, uh, 4DA AD, I'm using the Lynx Hilo. It's a pretty uh, well-known DA converter. So, okay, let's move over to the monitor controller. It's something that I built and designed myself. It's a passive monitor controller with step switches uh, for the control. You maybe you can hear the relays click. I'm not sure if you can hear it on the movie, but uh, it's based on um, wow, I forgot the name. But it's based on a Dutch uh, guy, and he built, uh, designed the the the, the relay-based uh, attenuator, totally passive, with just one resistor in the chain when when it's connected. So, um, really transparent. A class A um, headphone amplifier output, totally great. Uh, yeah, great sounding amplifier for your headphones. And I'm using a set of uh, Sennheiser HD600. I modified it myself, by the way, because uh, I think it could be more open. Okay, a couple of push buttons, really AOA uh, switches, like really um, sturdy, you, you, you simply can't break them. Um, dim function, it simply dims the, the sound, uh, about 15, 20 dB, dB, depending on how you set it. You'd left, you'd right. Uh, this is a cool button. Diff, which is the difference. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm inverting uh, the, the 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 signal on one of the channels, and if I push diff and mono at the same time, I'm just listening to the side channel, which could be interesting for some reasons. And of course, I also have a mono uh, function and monitor one, monitor two. I can switch between the. B and W's and the F and tones that I'm also sometimes using for uh, setting the right uh, levels and things. Okay, so that's the hardware that I'm using mostly. Uh, for the rest I'm using three screens. One really small screen, a 10 inch screen for monitoring for uh, the meters. One for waveforms and one bigger screen on the, on the floor. There is a 42 inch screen uh, for... Um, yeah, for my plugins and things. And it's if you look at it from here, you don't even see the screen because it's not blocking the sound, which is great, of course. This is a great thing, the knob control. It really changed my way of working. Um, uh, it's basically a mouse, and now you can actually tweak parameters in a plugin without looking at the screen because no matter what, uh, you're always looking at the screen, and when you're looking at the screen, you don't listen. And with this knob control, you can listen while still changing parameters on a plugin. Uh, quite recently, I switched to uh, a new controller, the Stream Deck, um, which you can see right here. It's 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 a pretty cool machine. It's it's basically 15 buttons with shortcuts, and um, it has uh, 15 displays. So if I press this, you can see that it's changing a bit. And yeah, like I said, it, it it's basically a small controller, really small if you compare it to the, the EQ, you can see the size and, and it's really really cool. Um, changed my life as well because I like shortcuts but not on uh, on a keyboard like that. Okay, uh, for the rest this is the amplifier that I'm using. Uh, it's an Encore amplifier, a Hypex uh, amplifier, uh, 400 watts per channel RMS 
and yeah I build it myself but that's not really hard because you simply buy the modules and then you have an amplifier um, really sturdy cables in the back there uh, these are the speaker cables uh, W and M uh, Weber and Maurer I think it is out of my mind really sturdy cables and they work like a charm and for the rest yeah what else could I show? Maybe an overall shot, but I think you've seen the pictures before. Uh, the BMWs, 802s, um, small story. You can see that there's uh, a block of concrete underneath it. It's uh, 15 centimeters high and above that there's uh, sorbetane pads uh, so that it's isolated from the floor. It's a bit wobbly. If, you, if I do this, you can see that. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but it's a bit wobbly. But that's okay. Um, and it really changed the sound. It, it really made made it sound even better than it's already uh, when yeah than it already is. Okay, so this is basically the the Goose Music Studio uh, when it comes to the hardware. And also, don't forget the turntable. Of course, I can't live without this turntable. No, just kidding. Okay, guys. Um, Thanks, and if you need mastering, uh, go to my website uh, www.dagoosmusic.nl. Um, thanks a lot, and I hope to see you soon.